to worship. In the Celtic year, the 31st of October into the 1st of November is called Sawin, the coming of the dark. Today in our prayers, we will be remembering that in the dark, the light of Christ shines. Here's a song. Stags give tongue, winter snows, summer goes. High cold blow, sun is low, brief his day, seas give spray. Fern clumps redden, shapes are hidden, wild goose raise wanted cries. Cold now girds wings of birds, icy time, that's my rhyme. The clocks have been changed, darkness is now encroaching upon our waking day. Halloween is on Tuesday night with All Saints the 1st of November on Wednesday and November being the month for remembering the dead. But we can be sure that in the darkness, Christ, the light of the world, is with us. Our souls wait for God more than those who watch for the morning, more than those who watch for the morning. Out of the depths we have cried to you, O God, hear our voice. With our whole hearts we want to praise you, O God, hear our voice. If you, O God, should mark iniquities, who could stand? We will wait for God, our souls wait, and in God's word do we hope. Let us pray. God, you have always given bread for the coming day, and though we may be poor, today we believe. God, you have always given strength for the coming day, and though we may be weak, today we believe. God, you've always given peace for the coming day. And though sometimes of anxious heart, today we believe. God, you're always with us in our trials. And now, tried as we are, today we believe. God, you have always marked the road for the coming day. And though it may be hidden, today we believe. God, you have always lightened this darkness we have, and though the winter will soon be with us, today we believe. God, you have always spoken when the time was ripe, and though you may be silent just now, today we believe. In our weakness, you are our strength, in our darkness, light, in our comforts, sorrow and peace. From everlasting to everlasting, you are our God. Creator, Son and Holy Spirit, one God glorified forever. Merciful God, you made us in your image with a mind to know you, a heart to love you and a will to serve you. But our knowledge is imperfect, our love inconstant, our obedience incomplete. Do not hold this against us, but in your tender love forgive. Lord have mercy, Christ have mercy, Lord have mercy. The Almighty and merciful God always grants us pardon and remission for all our sins, time for amendment of life, and the grace and comfort of the Holy Spirit. God of love, your Son gave us a new commandment that we should love one another, even as you love us, the unworthy and the wandering. Give us minds forgetful of past ill will and hearts to love one another. Through the same Jesus Christ, your Son, our Saviour, who taught his first disciples to pray many years ago. Our Father, who is in heaven, holy be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us in the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For yours is the kingdom, the power and the glory, now and forevermore. Amen. Psalm 27 of David The Lord is my light and my salvation, whom shall I fear? The Lord is the stronghold of my life, of whom shall I be afraid? When evil men advance against me to devour my flesh, when my enemies and my foes attack me, they will stumble and fall. Though an army besiege me, my heart will not fear. The war break out against me, even then I will be confident. 
One thing I ask of the Lord, this is what I seek. That I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life to gaze upon the beauty of the Lord and to seek him in his temple. For in the day of trouble, he will keep me safe in his dwelling. He will hide me in the shelter of his tabernacle and set me high upon a rock. Then my head will be exalted above the enemies who surround me. At his tabernacle will I sacrifice with shouts of joy. I will sing and make music to the Lord. Hear my voice when I call, O Lord, be merciful to me and answer me. My heart says of you, seek his face, your face, Lord, I will seek. Do not hide your face from me. Do not turn your servant away in anger. You have been my helper. Do not reject me for, or forsake me, O God, my saviour. Though my father and mother forsake me, the Lord will receive me. Teach me your way, O Lord. Lead me in the straight path because of my oppressors. Do not hand me over to the desire of my foes, for false witness rise up against me, breathing out violence. I am still confident of this. I will see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Wait for the Lord. Be strong and take heart and wait for the Lord. Matthew chapter 5, reading from verses 13 through to 16. Salt and light. You are the salt of the earth, but if the salt loses its saltiness, how can it be made salty again? It is no longer good for anything except to be thrown out and trampled by men. You are the light of the world. A city on a hill cannot be hidden. Neither do people light a lamp and put it under a bowl. Instead, they put it on its stand and it gives light to everyone in the house. In the same way, let your light shine before men that they may see your good deeds and praise your Father in heaven. Sawi, the coming of the darkness. The early Celtic Christians, like the Jewish Church of New Testament times, measured their days from sunset to sunset, and their seasons from dark to light and back to dark again. So the festival of Samhain, at the start of the darkest time of the year, was the beginning of the year, a time of new beginnings. The idea of the pattern of our lives being determined by when there is light and when there is darkness seems a bit strange to us, living in a society where there is no stopping for the darkness. 24-hour petrol, 24-hour groceries, workplaces on the go through all 24 hours of the day. We need not heed the darkness because we can make everything light. In the global garden that we tend, everything is always available. We need not heed the seasons with their scarcity and abundance because we can have everything all the time in great amounts. Of course, both continual light and ever available strawberries have their serious disadvantages. Apart from impoverishing our souls, they also waste the earth's resources and impoverish fellow human beings in the production of them. And what about the darkness of the soul? Need we heed this awfulness? Or can we, in this culture of light which reveals nothing, Ignore the coming of the darkness, the black despair of another winter, the November remembering of the dead. We turn our eyes instead towards Advent and Christmas, all bright tinsel and dazzling lights and angels. Surely that's what we really need to keep us going through the dark months. David Adam, an Anglican priest who was for a time based at Lindisfarne Abbey, has written a book called Tides and Seasons, in which he reminds us all that our lives revolve round the seasons and in themselves follow a tidal, seasonal pattern. We experience high tides and low tides, spring times and autumn times. We need to experience high tides and low tides, spring times and autumn times, to lead a complete and fulfilled existence. And he points out that we all move inexorably from springtime to winter, incoming tide to low tide in our own lives. 
I think this time of year is like the ebb tide. We've had the fruitfulness of summer. Winter is still to hit us with all its ferocity, but the darkness is drawing in and the cold and wet are near at hand. Yet David Adam sees God's hand in it all. It is your tide that pulls me, Lord. Draw me to yourself. When one tide ebbs, another flows. Nothing is lost, only it suffers a tide change. Lord of life, when the tides wane, grant me a hand till I rise again. When the strand is becoming wide, keep me safe at the ebb tide. Having a festival or celebration at this time of year is nothing new, nor is it confined to British culture. Bonfires have been associated with autumn since pre-Christian times. The word bonfire comes from the French bon feu, or from the bone fires of the slaughtered cattle which were cooked on fires because they could not be overwintered. People lit fires to beg the sun not to leave them during winter, making fires as a pledge that spring would once again come. The pre-Christian Celts commemorated the dead on October the 31st, their New Year's Eve, and believed that the spirits of the dead walked about on the earth then. The bonfires were lit to welcome these spirits. The early Christian church couldn't eradicate this tradition and finally gave up trying in 837 and established the feast of all saints on November the 1st and the commemoration of all souls on November the 2nd. And so we kept Halloween, the eve of All Hallows, on October the 31st. The island of Iona is one of my favourite holiday retreats venues. The first time I went, I was amazed at how special a place it seemed, even with the hundreds of tourists milling about. I later read that George MacLeod, the first leader of the Iona community, refer to Iona as a thin place on earth, where the solid realm and the spiritual realm almost seem to touch. November is thought of as the thinnest time of year, the season at which the veil between time and eternity can easily become transparent, when the idea of an unseen world around us seems most believable. The Celtic Christians were good at protective prayers and charms for such times. Here's one. Be each saint in heaven, each sainted woman in heaven, each angel in heaven, stretching their arms for you, smoothing the way for you, when you go thither over the river hard to see, or when you go thither home over the river hard to see. Or this one, also from a collection of old Gallic blessings. The sacred three, my fortress be, encircling me, come and be round my hearth, my home. The nights are fair drawn in. That'll be the conversation starter for the next wee while now. As we enter this time of darkness, do we have the patience, the faith, the ability to sit out the dead time? Can we use this time to face our fears, to cry because we remember a happier past, to search for God in the dark, hoping that God is likewise searching for us? Dare we put our fragile lives into God's hands in this way? Or will we just skip November with its doom and gloom and start the Christmas preparations, put on the glitzy Christmas lights and start thinking thoughts of babies, mangers, kings and turkeys? November is about having patience and taking time, neither of which our society values or encourages. I'm going to finish with another prayer by David Adam called Until the Tide Turns. Lord, I wait for the tide to turn, until the distant becomes close, until the far off becomes near, until the outside is within, until the ebb flows. Lord, I wait for the tide to turn, until weakness is made strong, until blindness turns to sight, until the fractured is made whole, until the ebb flows. Lord, I wait until the tide turns, until the ordinary becomes strange, until the empty is presence full, until the two become one, until the ebb flows. Amen.
Let us pray to God who made us and sustains us. O oh God, look with mercy on your church with all our faults and failings, missed opportunities and misunderstandings, as we learn to be truly your body on earth. God of light in the darkness, have mercy on us. We lay before you the political issues, the moral dilemmas, and the dreams of peace that concern our world and all who share its resources. Where we can see no clear way forward, give us your vision and enable us to be good stewards of all you provide. We ask that you would guide us in our response to this week's news. So many refugees drowning in the seas of the world. The ongoing violence against civilians in so many parts of the world. Victims of flood and earthquake needing help. Forest fires still raging across Canada, Turkey, Greece and Tenerife. The impact of climate change leading to some people suffering drought and others suffering flooding. God of light in the darkness, have mercy on us. We ask you to be part of all our relationships, transforming them with your love so that we appreciate one another more and value what each has to offer. God of light in the darkness, have mercy on us. Surround with comfort and reassurance those who feel spiritually dried up or emotionally drained. Heal and mend broken bodies and broken hearts and provide refreshment for those who are walking the valley of misery and depression. God of light in the darkness, have mercy on us. Gather into your kingdom those who have run the race and fought the good fight and have mercy on all who are at the point of death. God of light in the darkness, have mercy on us. The writer of the Gospel of John says that Jesus is a light that shines in the dark, a light that darkness could not overpower. May we be your lights in the dark places of your world. God of light in the darkness, have mercy on us and give us your peace. Amen. Once again, it's been a privilege to worship with you. As we enter November, the month of remembering, may we remember that the Almighty God has made us into one communion, one fellowship in the mystical body of Christ our Lord. And may God grant us grace so to follow the example of those blessed saints of the past who have lived in God's ways that we may also come to know those joys which God has prepared for us that love God. And now a prayer and a blessing. All hallows, all saints, all souls, all holy, 
We say the words, we look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Those who have died are a part of us. We name them, we tell their stories. The love they had for us and we for them is not dead, is not forgotten. We do not know about what life there is to come, but we know that those who have died are part of us. We name them, we tell their stories. The love they had for us and we for them is not dead, is not forgotten. All living, all looking, all dying, all mystery, all the journey. Give me what I can grasp, Lord, and your love to keep me holy, and I too will walk with you. And so see to it that you be at peace among yourselves and love one another. Follow the example of good folk of old, and God will comfort you and help you, both in this world and in the world which is to come. And the blessing of God, Creator, Son and Holy Spirit, be with you now and forevermore. Amen. <laughs>